Shalom everybody, welcome back. Today is day seven in the 10 day judgments I am releasing upon mankind. If you haven't watched the first videos, I urge you please go and watch it. Every day is unique. Every day Father gives us some, some insight to understand what is going on. Why is he telling us these things? He is preparing us. He's telling us what to do through each of these days and he's telling us what's coming. Yes, because as the bride of the Messiah, Father loves us and he desires to prepare us for what is coming so that we, we aren't taken aback when it happens, when we, so that we aren't caught off guard, so that we understand what to do to prepare, to go through it. Because Father is giving me the prophetic insight that this current kingdom of man is coming to an end. As I shared in video one, please go back and watch it. It's the most important video of all. Video one, I share why this is happening. That we have been in bondage to slavery. That Father sees this current world system as a spiritual Egypt. And therefore, he is pouring out judgment upon it to free us from what we, uh, we have, what we don't even realize we're in bondage to. This is so important. We're going to see economic collapse. We're going to see famine. We're going to see so many things, extreme weather happening, earthquakes happening, the earth cracking open, the earth shaking, so many things, fires raging all across the earth, volcanoes erupting. We're going to see extreme weather events. Floods, hail, snow, all of these things are being predicted. And Father is also giving us plagues that's going to bring down this current kingdom of man. And the only thing that will remain is the kingdom of God. And therefore, we must understand that we are in the kingdom of God and therefore we do not fear what is coming. God is not trying to cause fear in our hearts. He's trying to prepare us. Are we going to listen? Are we going to take heed to the warnings he's giving us? Are we going to pray about it ourselves and see what God wants us to do individually? Or are we just going to dismiss it and then see that day come upon us suddenly? And then we didn't prepare. Then we didn't do what was necessary to ensure that we would be okay throughout this time. Therefore, I urge you, please, some of these things are rough that are being spoken but i'm going to show you today in the word of god that god does judge this is a part of who god is we cannot say that god doesn't judge anymore it is in his word i'm going to go through scripture after scripture after scripture he continues to judge the kingdom of men and he will continue to do so until the very last day in fact it gets worse up until the day of the Lord. So many biblical prophecies speak about the day of the Lord. That time is going to be the worst ever on mankind. Judgment will be poured out according to the book of Revelation. Go read it. Judgment will be poured out upon all mankind. We cannot deny it. We cannot pretend that it's not going to happen. That This is not how God is. We cannot take away half of scripture and say that it's not so because we are too afraid or we are too comfortable in our current lives. When God sees the sin upon this world, the darkness that has overtaken it, the suffering that people are enduring at the hands of wicked men and because of the darkness that rules this earth right now, God must judge. God must step in because we are busy destroying ourselves in the last hundred years alone. Let's say 120 years. We have caused more destruction on this earth than any of the other kingdoms, even combined for more than 5,000 years. Let that sink in. In just 120 years. We have destroyed Earth's resources more than 5,000 years of man on Earth. In fact, the Father said in the seven-day prophecy I released, He said two years ago, He said, listen, if I don't step in, 
you will destroy yourself and this earth within 20 years. God has to step in because we are destroying our own habitat. You know, not even animals do that. Animals don't destroy their own home, their own habitat, but we're doing it. We're depleting our resources. Show me a place today on this earth that still has clean drinking water in a river. All the rivers are contaminated, even in the Amazon. Everything is contaminated. The oceans are contaminated. Species are dying out, going extinct. We are doing this. The last 120 years, we're doing this. Our generations are doing this to the earth. And your God must just go, oh, well, I'm going to bless you. It's not going to happen. We really need to wake up. It's gotten to the point now where it's very serious. We're about to receive it. And we need to prepare. We need to know what to do. We need to understand what God requires from us. Because we will not be able to continue living like this after the judgment. Yes, I am not prophesying the end of all time. Can Jesus return during this time? Of course he can. He can return any time he desires. But understand that it's been the time of the end since the church began. Since the church began, we've been waiting for the return of the Messiah. Only the Father knows when he will return. So we continue to listen and live by faith. We understand that there are difficult times that will be coming upon the earth. But notice something else, that even since the early church, since the early church they believed that it was the end. We see that in the book of Revelation. Do you know that John, when he wrote the book of Revelation and he spoke about the Antichrist and he gave the number of his name, do you know that that was code for the Emperor Nero? His name adds up to triple six. There's so much of prophecy we don't understand in the Bible. So much we have misinterpreted. Do you know that it adds to triple six? John was specifically referring to Nero. He couldn't write his name. He would have been executed immediately. And therefore he used a, a, a riddle, knowing that people would be able to know through the riddle who was the Antichrist. John believed that Nero was the Antichrist. And so the Bible warns us many Antichrists will arise, many throughout the centuries. And every time people think this is the end, it's over now. Yes, we are in difficult times. Yes, we're going to go through much tribulation. Up until this prophecy, I, be I believe this was the end. Just like many other prophets, I can see they also believe this is the end. But this is not what God is saying to me in this prophecy. This is the end of our current civilization. We are going to have an end to how things are working in this current civilization. God is going to judge it and bring it to an end because we are destroying ourselves and we are destroying the earth. And he desires for us to live a very different way. In the same time, though, he is going to, he's going to appear to us mightily. He is busy building his ecclesia, his remnant, in the midst of the darkness, according to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 60, sorry. He is busy shining his light. His light will shine so brightly during these dark times. So we have nothing to fear when we know God and we walk with God. He is our shield. He is our protector. He will lead the way. But we need to listen. We need to pray. We need to know him right now. Because he's warning so much of his people. But we need to listen. And continue to prepare according to the Holy Spirit and what he's telling each of us to do. That's very, very important. So just for clarity, that's what I'm prophesying. As you're seeing in the heading, I'm prophesying the end of our current civilization. It will continue after that. The remnant will be saved. God's kingdom will continue. And yes, other people as well. People that have been prepping. People that are not necessarily Christians, but they can, they can read the signs of the times. 
They can see what's going on. So they've been prepping, growing their own food, getting their own land, getting off the grid, all of these things. These people are going to survive. But us as Christians, we're so comfortable in our comfort and we're not getting off that chair and getting ready because most people are just waiting for the rapture to get out of here. That's what's happening. A lot of people are just waiting for the rapture. I don't have to do a thing because before it gets difficult, God's going to zap me out of here. I'm going to go to heaven. That's what 80% of the church believes in the West anyway. What about the church in Asia? You know, what about the church in Africa? That's right now, as we speak, getting persecuted in the real sense of the word. They're getting beheaded. They're getting killed for their faith in Jesus. Have you seen what's going on in Mozambique? Have you seen how ISIS is spreading in Africa, killing the Christians? What about China? Have you seen what's happening there? Church is getting burned down. The Bible is getting rewritten by China. They decided they can't kill the Christians. They can't put a stop to it, so they're going to rewrite the Bible. But we're comfy. God's not going to judge. God's going to zap us out of here. You know, we don't have to prepare. This is ridiculous. We as believers, we don't obey the Lord. We don't fear him. We don't even know him. So many people don't know God. Because if you did, you would understand and read the signs of the times, as Jesus told us to do, to keep our eye on what is happening around us. We have to understand that the end will only come after biblical prophecy has been fulfilled. The son of perdition must rise, as the Bible prophesies. The son of perdition must be revealed, the Antichrist. Yes, there will be many Antichrists throughout the time, but the Antichrist that will sit in the temple of God and make himself out to be a God. That hasn't happened yet. And I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Yes, they have all this temple talk, but there's no temple. There isn't even land to build the temple on yet. Because still, that dome is sitting on the ground where the temple is supposed to be built. So much biblical prophecy still has to come to pass. And we know from Jesus himself that it is important that every word of God must be fulfilled. Every word of God will not fall to the ground. Everything prophesied in this book must happen before the end comes. And therefore, I can understand why the Father says, this is not the end. This is not, we're in the last days, as we have been for the last 2,000 years already. We are in the last days. But this is not the end, as the Spirit of God has been saying. So it's important that we don't sit back. We think we're going to be raptured out of here. Because it might not be the end. And what then? It's important to listen and prepare. All right, let's get into day seven. I'm going to read the word of the Lord to you. And then I'm going to go through a lot of scripture today. All right, for thus says the Lord our God, the creator of heaven and earth and all that is in it. I am, and before you were, I was. For I hold all wisdom in my hand. Yet man does not turn to me. Man does not seek my wisdom. Man does not seek to know me, the holder of all wisdom. For I know things that man will never know on his own. I hold all secrets. I reveal those secrets to men. But you must seek me, O man. You must seek to know me, to come before my face and follow in my ways in order to know my secrets. For I did not reveal all to mankind, else man would have much power to destroy himself 
and to destroy others. If there is so much more I desire to reveal to you. If only you would know me, if only you would seek me, you shall surely find. You would knock and the door would be opened. You would call and I would say, here I am. How different would your existence on this earth be if you would only learn this simple lesson that I hold all wisdom and that my way is so much better than your ways? My power, my understanding and my might can be understood by man if I revealed it to you. Your kingdom would look completely different. It would function completely differently and man would live in peace and joy and enjoy the abundance from my hand. Yet I am the only one who holds this wisdom, says the Spirit of God. Many seek it in other ways. They pursue the fallen angels. They pursue Satan himself. Yet many fallen angels seek to know what I know. But who can, dis who can discover my secrets? If I do not reveal them myself, for I am God and there is no other. Therefore, man can run to and fro seeking knowledge from all kinds of created beings. But still, they shall not know until they have eaten from the tree that produces life. And yet the tree is there, easily accessed. All you have to do is know me. And follow in my ways, and I will give you of the tree of life, and you shall eat and be satisfied, and know my secrets as I reveal them to you. How different your life would be, mankind, if only you truly knew me. You would not have to strive as you do. You would not have to produce your food from the sweat of your brow. Your lives would be simple and filled with blessing and wonder. As you watch your heavenly Father feed you, Provide for you, clothe you, nurture you, care for you, love you, for I am love and I love my children. I love those who seek me with all of their heart, all of their soul and all of their might and I shall reveal my secrets to them. Therefore come now, let us reason together, O man. If you would only amend your ways, if only you had sought me, you would have found me. For all those who seek me shall find me. For I do not find pleasure in judgment. Yet because I am righteous, I must judge wickedness. Because I have heard the cries of the needy, the poor, and the weak, I must arise to judge those who have caused this great suffering on earth. Many ask where I am when they see the suffering on earth created by man. And yet, when I arise to judge, they laugh and mock and say, Well, God doesn't judge anymore. Therefore, decide. Do you desire my help in fighting evil and wickedness and reducing the suffering on this earth? Or do you want me to sit back and watch as people starve from hunger, as children are brutally murdered, as hatred grows in the heart of man? As children are even changed. A boy becomes a girl, a girl becomes a boy. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of man, and I must drive it far from him. I will drive it with my rod of judgment. Therefore, O oh man, know that another plague shall pour out upon you. It is a plague that will bring justice and set right the wrongs of man. For the earth shall be filled with creeping things. The creatures that slither on their bellies, that drives fear into the heart of man. Yes, I will send my plague of snakes, vipers and constrictors of every kind. It shall overrun your cities, everywhere you look, there they shall be. Men's hearts will fail them for fear of what is happening upon the earth. Many shall lose their lives, as these snakes strike when they least expect it. Man shall not know how to deal with the plague, even with all of your clever inventions and your magnificent technology. You will not know how to get rid of, the fa of this plague. As always, you will turn to chemicals, yet the more you use chemicals, the more they will come. As they creep out of the cracks and out of the depths of the earth, they will overrun your houses. 
your places of work and your cities shall be filled with them. For I am sending a plague of destruction. And who shall annul it? And who shall stand against it? And who of you mankind that is so wise will be able to solve this problem? Turn to me and know that I alone am God. There is no other. The end. All right. In our previous day, the father predicted vermin, specifically focusing on mice and um, rats. And then he briefly mentioned the snakes. Today is the snakes. Obviously, snakes eat the vermin. All right, so I believe that they're going to, we're going to have this plague of mice and rats everywhere, and the snakes are going to come out after their food. And before we know it, we're going to have this plague of snakes. Yeah, this is not nice. I don't like prophesying these things. But this is what the Father has said. And as much as what we, yeah, this is, this is rough. We're really going to have to pray. We're going to have to stand on God's word. You remember that Paul the Apostle got bitten by a snake? And he simply shook it off in the book of Acts. He, he shook it off as if nothing had happened, as if a mosquito had bitten him. He shook it off. And this is the kind of faith we're going to have to live in in these days. We're really going to have to cling to our faith and God's word because he says he gives us power over all the power of the enemy and we shall trample on serpents and scorpions. Now we're going to have to literally do that. And not be harmed. Beloved, now is the time to seriously pray. To seek God's ways. Anoint your properties. This is important. Keep the Passover that's coming. On the 22nd of April, keep the Passover. It's important. Take communion. Pray. All right, let's go into the scriptures. Psalms 25, 14. says the following the secret of the lord is with those who fear him and he will show them his covenant god reveals his secrets to those who fear him proverbs 25 verse 2 says the following It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is his glory to keep his secrets. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. Okay. Daniel 2, 28. Let's go there quickly. Daniel 2, 28, <clears throat> says the following, But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to the king what will be in the latter days. There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. Isaiah 58, turn with me there. Isaiah 58, verse 6. It says the following. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Is this not the will of God? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens of people, to let the oppressed go free, those who are oppressed by the demonic realm, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him, and not hide yourself from your own flesh, then, when you do the way of God, when you walk in his will, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. 
and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. You shall call and the Lord will say, you shall cry and he will say, here I am. This is what he's talking about in that word. When we follow in his ways, we have the ability to live on this earth, to call out. And in a moment, God says, here I am. What do you need? Well, we don't live according to his ways. We don't do what is required of us. We say, oh no, we don't have to do a thing. We can continue in our wickedness. It says, if you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. How many people are guilty of this? The pointing of the finger. We are all pointing the finger at everybody. And we speak such wickedness. We have such wickedness that comes out of our mouths. If you stop doing it, he says, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as noonday. If we do these things, God says that in the middle of the darkness, the times where it is really, really bad, it's not going to affect us. We will have light because we have followed in the ways of God. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul even in a drought. Nothing that happens on this earth will move you. Not even if mountains fall. Not even if the earth reels to and fro. Not if there's floods, tsunamis, earthquakes. None of it. War will affect you because you abide within the secret place of the Most High God. And you do his will. You look into the word of God and you obey it. You see, it's not about Torah. So many people, I have to touch on this again. So many people are stuck in the Torah. We're under a new covenant. All of God's word is important. Others are stuck in the New Testament and we never even look at the Torah. Paul says in Romans, the Torah is good. We're not bound to it anymore because we're in a new covenant. But there's so much goodness to get to know in the Torah and the prophets. We see the will of God revealed from the beginning of the book until the end of it. We need to keep all of it. We need to listen to the Father in everything. It's so important that we get to know his will. Do you study the book of wisdom called Proverbs? Do you understand the ways of God? He gives us wisdom through this book as well as through the Holy Spirit when we pray for it. Do we obey that? Do we seek his wisdom? Or we, do we just go to university and seek man's, man's knowledge? What do you think you're learning in a university? All about man's knowledge. It's not about God. Even in the Bible schools, you're not learning God's wisdom. You're learning man's knowledge about God, where you have the ability to get to know him yourself. You have the ability to study this book yourself. You even have the ability to hear his voice. This is part of the new covenant. covenant. From, the least, from, from the greatest to the least of these, they will know him. If you don't even know what the new covenant is, then you'll keep falling into the old covenant, being swept to, uh, from uh, all these false teachers that take us back to the Old Testament, the old covenant. When Jesus paid the price for you to be bought and brought into a new covenant. I have a video series on, on YouTube about the new covenant. I think I'm going to link it below. Please go and watch it. Because if you truly understand the new covenant, you'll never be yoked to the Old Testament laws. Although we do really reverence all of God's word. We, I've studied the Torah. There are many things that I keep in the Torah, but I am not yoked to it. I'm yoked to my Messiah. He is my salvation. 
I don't find salvation through keeping Torah. I find my, my salvation in Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah. All right. It says, verse 11, the Lord will guide you continually, satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called a repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. <clears throat> All right, Isaiah 55 verse 8 says the following. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is God speaking. Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, then your thoughts. In other words, I'm God. I know much more than you. Why do we not listen to him? I'll tell you why at the end of this. All right, go with me to Proverbs 1, verse 2 to 7. It says the following, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles, the fear of of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Other translations say, says wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's why God, God is calling a lot of mankind fools. Why? Because we, we reject his wisdom. That makes us fools. Because we can only be wise if we have his wisdom. If we receive his wisdom, anyone who doesn't have his wisdom is a fool. It doesn't matter if you have a PhD. If you do not have the wisdom of God, you are a fool. That's as simple as that. Because only God is wise. You see? All right, go with me to Proverbs 1 verse 20. 233. Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. She cries out in the chief concourses at the openings of the gates in the city. She speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. The Bible calls people like these fools. Turn at my rebuke, says wisdom. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded because you disdained all of my counsel and would have none of my rebuke. I will also laugh at your calamity. When bad things happen to you, the Bible says wisdom laughs at you because you would not listen to wisdom. I will mock when your terror comes. Listen to this. This is God's word. This isn't me speaking. Have you read this? Wisdom says she will mock when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm, suddenly, and your destruction comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. 
They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. There is the answer again. They refused God's wisdom because they did not fear him. Too many Christians today do not fear God. We've made him our buddy and our pal. And we've forgotten that he is the God of heaven and earth. And he created everything with, around us, within us. He created us. Within a moment, he breathed life within us, and within a moment, he can take that life. Within a moment. Oh, but that's not God. But that is God. If you truly know your word, if you understand what this book says from the beginning till the end, you will know God. You will know what he's like and what he expects of us. When Jesus came, he didn't change God. He didn't change who God is. In fact, he said, I only do what I see my father do. He did exactly what his father also does. He didn't change who he is. In fact, Jesus himself judged and said he is coming back as our judge. But we don't know these things because we don't see God. We don't go after his wisdom. We don't read the Bible for ourselves. We hang on the lips of the prophets and the pastors. They teach us the Bible. And they only teach us the good things about God. They never speak about judgment. They very rarely speak about sin. And they very rarely call the church to repent. And they also very rarely talk about the enemy. A lot of people don't even know that Satan still walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Nobody understands that there's a demonic realm all around us. People think this is just fables and tales because they don't read their Bible. 29. <clears throat> because they hated knowledge. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel. And it, they despised my every rebuke. This is God giving me wisdom. I am not here teaching you out of my own head knowledge. This is the spirit of God that has taught me his wisdom. I am giving you the wisdom of God. Yet many are doing exactly this. They go, they would have, they'll have none of my rebuke. I do rebuke people when they don't read their Bibles, when they don't seek God for themselves, when they laugh and mock at the judgments of God, and when they do not fear Him. But people don't want to hear it. Oh no, we must just prophesy good things. Here it says, wisdom says, verse 31, Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. This is God's word, people. You'll be filled to the full with your own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me, will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Proverbs 2 verse 1 to 9. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver, do we go after wisdom more than money? Who is our God? Is it money? Or is it the God most high? The only God. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth comes knowledge. And understanding. 
He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and every good path. 3 verse 5 to 26 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Today, men, women, they all lean on their own understanding. What they understand, what the pastor told them to understand. The Bible is clear. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Now it says on Sunday, acknowledge him. And when you pray. Is that what it says? No. It says, in all your ways, in everything you do, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. A lot of people think they are so wise. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to skip over something here. It says, verse 11, My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. But we say it doesn't exist anymore. New Testament, there is no chastening of God. It actually says so in the New Testament. It says that the Father will deal with us as sons. And he chastens those he loves. In fact, if you are without chastening, you are not a son. If God never deals with the things he needs to deal with in your life, if you, never, if you never see that side of God, you are not a son. You are not a daughter. The word of God is true. Our lives need to be measured against that. The word of God is truth. We must stop trying to make it say something else. The word of God is truth. Everything else is a lie. Do not detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Which one of you does not correct your own children? And yet we expect our father never to correct us. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. We seek riches and honor our own way. But here wisdom says, if you will seek me diligently, I will give you riches and honor. See, this is the problem. It's not that we've built houses. Somebody said, oh, what are we supposed to go live in the jungle? No, you're missing the point. We're not doing things according to God's way. We're destroying his creation. We're not living according to his wisdom. All he asks of us is to turn to him in all of our ways, to do things his way, to build his church his way, to take his word his way, to not interpret it in our own ways and twist it to say what we want it to say or only take the good things out of it and leave the rest, never even read it. That's what he wants from us. It says, her ways are ways of pleasantness. Her ways 
oh, sorry, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life. Here we see the tree of life. What is tree of life? Wisdom. To those who take hold of her. And happy are all who retain her. We are invited to eat from the tree of life. It represents God's wisdom, but we keep eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because God did not surely say that we shouldn't do all of this great stuff. God did not surely say that we, we shouldn't seek after all of this knowledge. God didn't surely say that we cannot do it on our own and praise the work of our own hands. Surely that's not God. God said we'll be raptured out of here before we even see difficulty. We're just going to live a life of comfort, laziness, go to church on a Sunday, go to work from Monday to Friday, go on our holidays, buy our houses. Blind, blind, blind. Verse 19. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up. And clouds dropped down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Don't ever let wisdom even depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion so there will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way. Your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. It reminds me of a testimony. I have so many testimonies. But this is a powerful testimony. God moved us all around South Africa for seven years. And sometimes he put us in the most strangest places, in the middle of nowhere. The one time we were placed in a farm, there was the, the closest neighbor was about, I'd say about, I don't know, five, six kilometers away. We were in the middle of nowhere. So if anything happened, and we had no walls around our property, so anyone could walk onto it any time of the day. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fun. Anyway, we were sleeping the one night, <clears throat> and um, I am fast asleep. I don't wake up easily when I sleep at night. So I'm, I'm, I'm fast asleep. But while I am sleeping, it's like my spirit becomes aware. While my eyes are closed, I still cannot explain it. While my eyes are closed, all right, through a window and a curtain that is drawn closed, I become aware of a flashlight that is walking down in the felt below. I see it. It wasn't, it wasn't my physical body that was seeing it. My spirit it was like the Holy Spirit was showing my spirit what's going on while I'm sleeping. In that moment, I realized, as I realized there's somebody walking in the felt, I opened my eyes. And I'm still trying to wake up. I open the curtain and there is people walking with a flashlight down in the felt. So we could, we could quickly switch on the, the security lights and make them aware that we know they're there. And uh, yeah, nothing happened. While I am sleeping, God watches over me. While I'm sleeping. That's not the only time. Another time, we were in a small town. We thought we were safe in this town. It was a beautiful little town. We thought, this is a really safe place. Hmm. 
One night, again, I'm sleeping. The father wakes me up. Something past two. I can't remember the exact time now. He woke me up past two. I'm sleeping. He wakes me up in the middle of the night. Now, no, he's waking me up to pray. Got to get up. So I get up. He tells me to go make myself a cup of coffee. I'm like, uh huh. God's telling me to make a cup of coffee, really? <laughs> but I obey. I go make myself a cup of coffee. Thinking, how am I going to sleep after this cup of coffee? I go, I sit in my lounge, I open my Bible, and I start praying. I read the Bible. I finish praying, finish reading the Bible. So I decide to go outside onto my stoop with my cup of coffee, thinking that the neighborhood is safe. So I go outside, I sit down. As I sit down, in that exact moment, I think this is now about quarter to three, ten to three already in the morning. The stoop I'm sitting on is pitch dark. There's no light on. The, the lights in the house are on because I just came from there. But where I'm sitting is totally dark. As I sit down, I look up and I see three men coming down the street. At first, I don't realize there's a problem until they all three turn simultaneously to my front gate. In that moment, I realized, oh, no. So I, I got up and I started backing towards my front door, you know, to try and get inside the house, watching them as they were trying to climb over our gates. Totally freezing in my heart. I mean, you can imagine in that moment, you don't know what's going to happen. And um, anyway, we, have, we had a dog and she was sleeping next to my chair. And then when they touched the gate, she woke up and she barked. And when she barked, they looked up in my direction. The funniest thing happened. I saw them all three, when they looked up, they all three froze at the same time, looked at each other as if they were terrified, and they all turned around and ran back down the road where they had come from. I mean, I was just in shock. <laughs> Do you know what happened? I had blonde hair then. Did you see my previous, my old videos? I had blonde hair. I used to have blonde hair. And I was wearing a white gown. <laughs> we realized the next day that they thought I was a ghost. <laughs> That's why they ran away. But see how God knew that danger was coming. And he woke me up, took me downstairs, even led me outside with my cup of coffee. Because he knew at that exact moment they would see me and it would drive fear into the heart of those who are trying to come and harm us. I mean, if God didn't do that, what would have happened? They would have come into the house while our whole family was sleeping, three of my kids. Look at how God provides and protects his children. Even when you're sleeping, isn't he incredible when we know him and when we walk with him? All right. Proverbs. No, I finished Proverbs now. Did I? All right. No, Proverbs 4, verse 1 to 9. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father. Give attention to understanding, for I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also told me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away your words from my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. I just testified that that happens. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In all you're getting, get understanding too. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver it to you. All right, I better move now because we are running away over time. Genesis 3, verse 17. <clears throat> Listen. 
This is now after they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. After they sought their own way and turned away from God's way. This is what God says. He curses them. But I believe this curse comes automatically when we turn away from the tree of life and we seek after the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is what happens, because this is what Father said in this word to us tonight. He says, <clears throat> Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. You shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. God curses Adam with extremely hard labor to get his food. After he sought from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I find this so interesting. When in this word, God says, if you would only seek me and my wisdom, life wouldn't be that hard. We don't even know what that means because none of us are seeking that. How, how do we do it his way? I'm excited to find out. Are you? Let's pursue it and see where the Lord leads. All right. <clears throat> Go with me to James 1, verse 5 to 6. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. That's how easy it is. We, we need to just ask God for wisdom and start seeking out his wisdom in his book. And he says, but let him ask in faith, believe that God will give you wisdom. With no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Do you know, <clears throat> sorry, do you know what I prayed for the most in the beginning of my walk? Wisdom. Daily. All the time. Believing that God would give me wisdom. And he has. He has grown me. In wisdom. I'm writing books by the Holy Spirit in wisdom because God has given it. This isn't because I'm so great or I've done anything. In fact, some people think I don't know anything. I don't really care. I'll be a fool before God as long as his wisdom can shine through me. It's not about my own knowledge or anything I have sought in my own mind to do with my own mind. It's about revelation from the living God who gives me the wisdom to understand his word and to live according to his ways. Therefore, seek wisdom. Go with me to Nahum 1 verse 3. It says the following. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and he will not at all acquit the wicked. Not at all. So to say that he looks over the wickedness of this earth is against the word of God. He says he will not at all acquit the wicked. 1 Peter 4 verse 17 says the following. I'm so sorry this video is so long. 1 Peter 4 verse 17 <clears throat> says the following. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? 
Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as a faithful creator. Even Peter talks about the judgment of God. New Testament. Revelations 11 verse 18. says the following the nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged this remember i told you there is the final day that so many prophets in the bible are prophesying about that is the end that happens at the end it's going to be worse than what it's ever been on this earth then the full wrath of God gets poured out upon this earth. Do you understand that as a Christian? The wrath of God and the judgment of God will come? He talks about it. He hasn't changed. The time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those. Listen to this. You should destroy those who destroy the earth. Interesting. The Bible says that God will destroy those who destroy the earth. There is the confirmation in the word of God about everything I've been telling you about us destroying this planet, his creation. I haven't heard one other prophet speak the word of the Lord. If there is, show me a link. Give me a link. Don't tell me there's other people. So many people do it. Oh, this other prophet said it. And then when I ask, where's the link? Where did they say it? There's no response. If some other prophet has prophesied this, show it to me. I would love to hear it. But here is the confirmation of what God is showing me. It's not that far out there. It's not contrary to his word. It's absolutely what his will is. He will destroy those who destroy the earth. That's what it says. And yet we're not listening. Go with me to Romans 1 verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and God is talking about the planet around us, creation. That no man is without an excuse. Because when you look at that tiny little plant, or that tiny little creature, or the beautiful expanse of stars above us, you know there is a God. No man is without an excuse. It is his invisible attributes in fact the first time he revealed himself to me when i came face to face with the living god he revealed himself to me in his creation that's the day my life changed i stepped into the presence of the living god and this isn't some story i'm making up this isn't some telltale thing to make myself look great the fruit of that encounter was evident you can go ask my entire family all of my friends i changed overnight no one had preached the gospel to me yet after that encounter i gave my life to jesus in my lounge and knew i had to repent i was a sinner i needed a savior 
I didn't even have a Bible. That encounter was real. God revealed himself to me as he revealed himself to Moses with the burning bush. And I even had a witness. This, was, this wasn't in my imagination. I'm telling you this because I know people are going to start saying that. It wasn't my imaginations. I have a witness. The Holy One stood before me. My husband came close to me. He couldn't see what I was seeing, what God was revealing to me in his nature. But yet when he stepped close to me, he felt the presence of God around me and he also started weeping. Just as you see with Ezekiel, as he's sitting by the river, the presence of God comes. The other prophets that are sitting around him can't see what he's seeing. But they run away terrified because they just felt the presence of God. The same thing happened to me. He revealed himself to me in his creation. When you go and spend time in nature by yourself, what happens? Doesn't it peace fill your soul? Don't you feel like you get refreshed? There's a reason that happens. Because God reveals himself through all of his creation. Do you know what I saw that day? I saw the love of the creator woven through everything that he created. He reveals himself just as his word says in the New Testament. Through his creation, he created everything with love. He's invisible attributes, just like the names of God reveals, reveals his attributes, so creation reveals him too. We can see God in creation if we just look, if we just open our eyes and look. We could be at wonder at this beautiful God that we serve. But many people do not want to see in fact, many people do not see because we have closed ourselves up in these jungles of iron and steel with such pollution and light pollution that you can't even see the stars anymore. You don't ever see creation unless you go on a holiday. You're cut off from the living God more and more and more. And this is all part of the enemy's plan. All right, go with me to. Genesis 6, verse 5 to 7. It says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God could have wiped us all out back then. Thank God for Noah and his family. This is still the same God that we serve. He was grieved for making us. How does he feel today? He sent his son to die for us. And yet still, we continue in our sin. We don't follow his ways. Yes, there's a remnant that loves him. I'm not talking to you right now. There's a remnant that loves him and knows him and walks with him. But the rest of mankind, we are just continuing in our own things, doing our own ways, seeking our own knowledge, exalting ourselves as gods, building our own kingdoms, not knowing that the judgment of God is at hand. Malachi 3 verse 5 to 6. Scripture after scripture after scripture, and I'm only scratching the surface today. This isn't this isn't even all of it. 
I always battle to find Malachi for some reason. <clears throat> there we go, Malachi 3, verse 5 to 6. It says, I will come near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners. Listen to this. God will judge those who exploit employees. A wage earner is someone who's employed. The whole earth has been exploited. Against um, widows and orphans. And against those who turn away an alien. Okay, this is not an alien in the sky. This means a foreigner. Because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. You do all of these things because you don't fear God, because you do not seek wisdom, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You don't seek wisdom in God's ways. You don't fear him, and therefore you do all of these things. Hebrews 10, verse 27, says the following. Okay, let me go to 26. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Have you ever read that? If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing? This is the new covenant that you were bought by the blood of Jesus with and insulted the spirit of grace, the Holy Spirit. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We need to wake up. He is God. Do you understand what that means? Do you realize what it means to be God? We must stop bringing God down to this level where we think that we can do whatever we want. And he's just going to forgive us. That we will never have to give account of our thoughts or our words or our deeds. There it says in Hebrews, New Testament. Do we fear God? No, we don't because we don't know him. People are saying, how can you prophesy judgment? That's Old Testament. Prophecy today is only encouragement. It's all good. Then go to the New Age belief. Go join them. Because they also believe in Jesus. But everything is good and positive And that's what it's about. That's not what God intended. Yes, he does love us. Yes, he gives us great encouragement and love. And grace when we don't deserve it. 
Yes, he is merciful. Yes, he is kind. Yes, he is long-suffering. Yes, he is slow to anger. But there is another side that we are rejecting. God will not at all acquit the wicked. And he will not continue to forgive those who willfully sin. There are sins that you cannot be forgiven of. Did you know that? That if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven? Did you know that? What does it mean to blaspheme the Holy Spirit? How many of you even know what that means? Well, if you go read it in context, you see that it is calling the works that you see being done before you, whether it's miracles, healings, prophecy, whatever it is. If the Holy Spirit is working through somebody and you say, that's not God, what have you just done? You have blasphemed the Holy Spirit working in that person. You know, I've spent some time looking at false prophets. I don't usually, I don't like, because the first time I, I, I open a false prophet's video, the first few seconds, I already know this is a false prophet. Because I've got a spirit of discernment. We should all have that. But anyway, I've been looking to see what's going on out there. And I've just been dismayed and shocked at the nonsense people are listening to. It's ridiculous. I'm still going to work on exposing a lot of these lies because it's so necessary. These people have massive followings. We follow them because they tickle our ears. They tell us what we want to hear. But when somebody is truly filled with the Holy Spirit, we reject them. We don't want to listen to them. We judge them even. But the Lord said that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. So you need to have discernment, not just to discern evil, but also to discern when God is working. Test the spirits, beloved. Test the spirits. Don't just dismiss. What if it is God? And you're speaking against God himself because the Holy Spirit is the one that works through his children. This isn't us. We can't do these things. Only God does it. He gets the glory. And therefore we need to really pray for discernment to recognize the Holy Spirit at work within his children. And that's men and women as prophesied in the Old Testament already, that he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Men, women, children, God is working. And yet we cannot discern when he is. But it's the same thing that happened to Jesus. The Pharisees of that day wanted to stone him, even though miracles were happening right in front of their eyes even though crowds were gathering to hear the words of life flowing from the Messiah, they called him a, a worker of Satan, a worker of the devil. They wouldn't listen to him. doesn't matter what you do. These people that do not have the Holy Spirit will not recognize it. They, don't, they didn't recognize it with the Messiah himself. They will not recognize it. They will reject it. And therefore we pray for their salvation. My last thing. Sorry, this is a long video. The last thing I want to say is that we really need to fear God. If you do not understand, it is not the same as being scared of God. I just want to explain that. That's not what fear of God is. When we fear God, we reverence him. We have awe for him. We have respect. Those of you who have really good fathers, that, you know, you, you grew up in a house where you really respected your father to the day where even in your 50s and 60s, if your father is still alive, you will honor him. You will never speak to him disrespectfully. You know, he's a good man and he raised you well. You have that respect. 
that reverence for him. This is the same kind of feeling that we get with the fear of the Lord. Is that reverence, that respect. When he asks something, you do it because you have respect for him. You, re you revere him. That's the fear of God. It's not the same as the fear that we are thinking of. Do you have that for God? Because if you do, you will obey him. You will obey his word. You will not fall into continuous sin. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. All right. Shalom.